In this question, we're asked, why does lithium have a higher first ionization energy than sodium? If you look at the periodic table, lithium is in box number three. That is, it has an atomic number of, uh, of three, which means that its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. By comparison, sodium has an electron configuration, uh, in a neutral state at least, of neon uh, followed by 3s1. In fact, if I write that whole thing out, I'm going to go ahead and do it the longhand way. We've got 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2, 2, sorry, 2p6, 3s1. When we talk about ionization, or first ionization energies, that is the amount of energy required to uh, remove or tear away an electron from, a mol or from an atom. In the case of lithium, the electron that's being torn away in its first ionization is that one. That is an electron in a 2s orbital. By comparison, the first electron being removed from a sodium is in the 3s orbital. S orbitals, all s orbitals, 1s, 2s, 3s, it doesn't matter, all have the same shape. They're all spheres. So you can imagine lithium, if I were to draw this out, lithium has a nucleus, all represented by this dot. It has a, a 1s orbital, which is very, very small. And inside that 1s orbital, there are two electrons. Two electrons soaring around in there. It's 2s orbital, just like this 1s orbital, just like a Russian nesting doll, is nested inside the 2s orbital. So this is like a big sphere. And the 2s orbital has a single electron on it. In the case of sodium, we've got the same kind of thing. We have its nucleus. It's got a 1s orbital that has two electrons in it. It has, and I probably should draw that to size, sorry. Try and make it match this one. So it's got a 1s orbital, which is small, two electrons. Nested within it is a 2s orbital, which also has two electrons, in the case of sodium, soaring around in there. It has, of course, two p orbitals. Uh, and it's confusing when I say this. Every single set of p orbitals, there are actually three of them. One is, occupies the x orbital, one, or the x-axis, one occupies the y-axis, and one occupies the z-axis. And it's kind of difficult to draw that three-dimensionally, but I'm, I'm doing my best. And within those, there are six electrons, so I've got two in each of these individual lobes. One of these, once again, is occupying the x-axis, the other the z-axis, and the other the y-axis, all perpendicular. And then outside that, with all of this junk kind of nested within it, is a 3s orbital. And a 3s orbital is even larger, and it has a single electron in it. Okay, that's a lot more explanation than you probably want or need. Here's the, here's the, the point, I guess. Sodium's 3s orbital, or, or sorry, electron out in the 3s orbital is much further away from the protons in the nucleus than the outermost electron in lithium. What that means is that because that electron is further away from those protons, it's easier to remove it than it is if you're closer. So lithium has a much higher first ionization energy because its single electron that you're going to remove is closer to those protons in the nucleus. That then takes us to the second question in, in this set, and that is, what is the general relationship between size of an atom and its first ionization energy? Um, and here's the general relationship. As size gets bigger, first ionization energy <coughs> goes down. So as you get an element that's larger and larger and larger, it's easier and easier to take that electron in the outermost orbital away because that electron is so much further from the nucleus that it doesn't feel it as much as an electron would if it were smaller and smaller and smaller. So larger the size, the lower the first ionization energy and vice versa. This brings us perfectly to the last question in the set, which asks which element has the largest ionization energy and which one has the smallest? As we just discussed, the general trend of the periodic table is that elements in general get smaller as you go up and to the right on the periodic table and they get larger in the opposite direction, which makes helium the smallest element and francium the largest. There are of course a couple of exceptions along the way for very specific individualistic reasons. We will go ahead and ignore those and just focus on the general trend. We also learned that the smaller the atom, the larger its ionization energy. That is, it's harder to pluck an electron from a tiny atom because its electron cloud is so small and so close to the attractive force of its protons. In contrast, it's very easy, relatively speaking, to pluck an outermost electron from a very large atom, such as Francium's outermost electron that's in a 7s shell, is so far away from the protons in its nucleus that shaving off that outermost electron, it hardly even feels it, relatively speaking. 
It should make sense why that size trend also mirrors the increasing ionization energy trend shown in this periodic table. Now, while this trend does indeed mirror that of increasing electronegativity, there's one difference. Electronegativity does not include the noble gases, but ionization energy does. Remember, electronegativity is an element's thirst for electrons, and noble gases have the beautiful Goldilocks balance of electrons to protons, so they don't want or are not thirsty for more electrons and hence don't typically have measurable electronegativities. But do noble gases have ionization energies? Absolutely, because an ionization energy is the amount of energy required to pluck an outermost electron from an element. And you can do that from a noble gas just as well as any other atom. It's just that for noble gases, it's very, very hard. It should stand to reason then that helium being the smallest element would have the largest ionization energy and francium being the largest element has the smallest ionization energy.